Hi, Mr. T here with another conics tutorial and this time we're talking about hyperbola and this is the fourth of the conics. Again, as with the other conics, let's start with the geometric definition. In this case we have the set of points such that the difference of the distance between two foci is constant. So we get a set of points on one side where the distance is a constant and a set of points on a second curve. Contrast this to what we talked about in the last video about ellipses. In that case, the distances between the two, between the point and the two foci, the sum of those was a constant. In this case, it's a, di uh, a difference. Again, it's set on here the same thing. Uh, Here's a, another graph of a hyperbola. Now on this graph, and we'll be talking about that later, the box here, what I call a bounding box, and these red lines are not part of the graph. It's just the blue here and here. These, as we talk, will be are called asymptotes, so this curve, as the hyperbola goes out, will not cross that asymptote. One application for a hyperbola is used by NASA when they are trying to send satellites out to distant space and to gain speed or power they slingshot satellites around planets and when they plot those uh, trajectories they use the hyperbolic uh, function for uh, predicting that. This slide's busy so we'll talk through it. It's talking about the standard form of the equation for high hyperbola and like ellipses we've got two forms horizontal and vertical. The way we tell if a hyperbola from its equation is horizontal is by which of the terms is positive. When the x squared term is positive, it's horizontal, and if the y squared term is positive, it's vertical. This looks similar to our ellipse, except we have a minus here, and the standard form of all hyperbola similar to the ellipse will equal 1. The a value, when we take the square root of the a, gives us the distance to the vertices, just like in the ellipse. And the b goes to a point similar to a covertice. It's on the other direction, on the minor axis. But in this case, the hyperbola does not touch that point. But we use those two points, the vertices and these sort of imaginary covertices, to form a rectangle, which uh, is used to then, if we take lines through the diagonals of the rectangles, form our asymptotes, our oblique asymptotes. So when we're sketching the hyperbola it goes through the vertex here and forms a shape that's similar to a parabola but it's not the same because the parabola does not have any asymptotes. Uh, the foci are found by finding a number c and for hyperbola the equation for finding c is the same as equation as we use in triangles for the uh, Pythagorean theorem. In this case the uh, foci are further away from the origin than the vertices whereas on ellipses they would be inside and our two halves of the hyperbola wrap around the foci. We can, as I said, we can draw the uh, asymptotes by creating this bounding box. If we need to know the equations of the asymptotes, for a horizontal hyperbola, it's b over a times x, that line. So the slope of the asymptote is b over a, or minus b over a for the other asymptote. This picture shows for the vertical hyperbola, most everything is the same. Again, the y value will be the positive value. The a is different than in ellipses. On ellipses, the a is always bigger than b. For hyperbola, there is no relationship a can be bigger or smaller than b. But the way we tell which number is a is it's under the positive letter. Also, the only other thing that's different here, and other than it being vertical, is that to get the slope of our asymptote, now it's a over b instead of b over a. So we'll be going through some examples using these uh, standard forms. You're going to want to capture a lot of this information in your notes. So let's look at an example here. 
we have it in hyperbola. Again, we know it's a hyperbola because we have minus here. If that had been a plus, it would be an ellipse. And in this problem, our x squared is positive, so that means this is a horizontal ellipse, and we'll use that template to uh, break down this hyperbola. So I've already talked about how we know it's uh, horizontal. So this is a squared, so a is 4. This is b squared, it's 2. We use the Pythagorean theorem to calculate c squared. So c would be 4.5. Again, a is our distance to our vertices from the origin, 4 units and 4 units. B is this distance here, and the first thing I drew is I put my dots for my vertices and my uh, dots on the uh, minor axis, and I drew this rectangle through those points. I then drew my asymptotes by drawing diagonal lines through the corners of the asymptotes. Those will then give me the boundaries of the uh, hyperbola and allow me to sketch the hyperbola. So I'll come down and go this way and again up this way. Again, it's not going to cross the asymptote. Our foci again was the C and we could write the equation in exact form here. Our distance C was 2 radical 5 so we have both a positive and a negative right and left of the uh, origin. If we wanted to write the equations of our two asymptotes, the slope of these lines are B over A, so 2 fourths, which is 1 half, and we have both a line of positive slope and negative slope. In this example, the equation we start out is not in standard form. Uh, we do know it's a hyperbola because we have an X, both an X and a Y squared and subtracted. But we need this to be a 1, so we have to divide all parts of the equation by that number so that we can create a 1 here. We can either simplify these fractions or we can also, in case they don't divide evenly, we want to take and turn this into a complex fraction. So the number next to the squared letter will go down below the denominator. In this case, both 64 divides and 36 divides into this number evenly, but it is possible that the a squared and b squared could be uh, fractions. Now since we have the y squared as the positive term, we know it's vertical, and therefore this is the a. So then in this example, our value of a is smaller than b, which can never happen if this was a uh, ellipse. So b is 8. We use the Pythagorean theorem. I didn't show it here because this is a 3, 4, 5 a triangle, so it would be you know Pythagorean triple. So we have c is 10. Again, we would be using the equation c squared equals a squared plus b squared. To sketch the graph, since it's vertical, we go up 6 units and down 6 units and place our vertices. And we go in the uh, perpendicular direction on the minor axis, b units, so 8 units, and draw our bounding rectangle. Again, that's not part of the hyperbola. It's a tool we use for sketching the graph of the hyperbola. We go diagonally through the corners to form our asymptotes, and then we can sketch in our parabola. Now make sure you remember that it's vertical. A lot of times, some common mistakes in classes in the past years, the blue part, the bounding rectangle, and the asymptotes get drawn correctly, and then people draw the parabolas off to the side. This was vertical, so our, not parabolas, hyperbolas, so our hyperbola go up and down. Again, in this case, if we wanted to write the equation of our asymptotes, it's going to be a over b. Uh, we could also use rise over run. If we look at here, we've got a rise of up 6 and a run of 8, and we could use basic uh, linear uh, algebra to uh, find our asymptote equations. Now let's talk about going the other way, where we're given information about a hyperbola, and we want to write the equation of the hyperbola. In this case, we're given a foci and the vertices. Remember, foci gives us a number for c, so for this uh, hyperbole we know c is 8, and vertices give us a, so a is 6. And these points are on the x-axis, so we know if the vertices and foci are aligned on the x-axis that we have a horizontal uh, hyperbola. 
So I've already summarized this information here. Now we need to we need the value of b as well as a to write the equation. So we use our equation c squared equals a squared plus b squared and plug in the information that we knew and solve that equation for b squared. Now if we were going to sketch a graph, we would want to take the square root here of the 28 to get b so that we knew how far to go on the size of our bounding box. But here we were just asked to write an equation, and in the equation is a squared and b squared. So we're just going to put that number in for the b squared. And again, since it was horizontal, sorry, since these were on the x-axis, we make x squared positive. So, and the a goes under the x squared. So that's our equation. I think this is the end of our hyperbola tutorial, and wish you luck in working your problems. Thank <music> you.